Things have just changed for evictions in California. AB 3088 just passed, and we're here to take you through that massive bill. Hey there, Christian Walsh, Cobalt Banker Wire Associates. We specialize in helping tenants and landlords, buyers and sellers like you in the state of California, and we are here to fill you in on this one. And there is a lot of ground to cover, so we are gonna give you an eviction update. We're gonna talk about the declaration of COVID-19 related financial distress. We're gonna talk about foreclosure protection for landlords. We're gonna talk about recovering rent, and then we're gonna wrap it up with some advice for tenants and advice for landlords. So again, a lot of ground to cover. We're gonna use the chapter sections in this video so you can listen to sections again if you need it. So go ahead and hit that like button if you're ready to dive in. All right, so we're ready to dive into a discussion about AB 3088. And remember, like I always say, I can't give tax or legal advice, so you need to run all this by the appropriate professional, preferably an attorney that understands eviction laws. And these are some big changes to the law. So this uh, bill was essentially released on Friday August 28th and raced through the assembly and was signed into law on Monday the 31st. So this is brand new. This is replacing anything else that was under consideration before. So AB 1436, which I talked a bunch about, SB 1410, the voluntary bill between tenants and landlords, which I talked a lot about. This replaces those bills. Some legislators are looking at this bill at AB 3088 as a temporary band-aid that gets us through the end of the year and a little beyond, but a lot of the provisions in the bill don't sunset until 2025. So this solution's here, and in a nutshell, the quick summary, it's going to allow eviction protections through January 31st, 2021. So let's dive into the COVID-19 Tenant Relief Act of 2020. So we'll talk about eviction. So evictions have been on a moratorium since April 6th, when the Judicial Council for California put in place an eviction moratorium that prevented any new evictions from moving forward. So that was residential, commercial, anything except for a health and safety eviction. So that was a big, big problem. And technically the Judicial Council shouldn't be in charge of putting a legislative decision in place like that. It's up to the legislative branch. So the Judicial Council met and said they were gonna sunset this special emergency rule on September 1st, and that means that evictions could move forward on September 2nd, today. And you know what? Some evictions are going to start moving forward. So what eviction protections are there for COVID-19? So here's where it gets interesting. So tenants who haven't paid rent from the beginning of March, so March 1st to August 31st, which is the day this bill was passed, those tenants who have not paid rent cannot be evicted. Now going forward from September 1st through January 31st, 2021, those t same tenants can be evicted for non-payment of rent due to COVID-19, but they must pay at least 25% of the rent that they owe in order to qualify. We're gonna dive into more as to what this means for landlords and tenants and what they have to do to make sure that they qualify for the COVID-19 Tenant Relief Act of 2020. So here's one of the biggest changes to the eviction process in California. So in the past, if a tenant didn't pay rent, the landlord would issue a three-day notice to pay or quit, which is just what it says. They have three days to pay or get the heck out of there. And then if they don't get the heck out of there, the landlord then moves forward with the eviction process, the unlawful detainer process in the courts. But here's the change. So now if a tenant doesn't pay rent, a landlord has to give a 15 day notice. And those 15 days do not include Saturdays, Sundays, or judicial holidays. So here's what else needs to happen. The landlord must deliver to the tenant a notice with special language, which we have links below and samples below, we're one of the first, and a declaration of COVID-19 related financial distress. Super easy to remember that one, but it's required that a landlord delivers a blank copy of that. And what that will do, the tenant then has 15 days to fill out that declaration. It's simple thing, signing under the penalty of perjury that COVID-19 has affected their income. 
So that is a big, big change right there. So it's required that the landlord deliver that and the tenant has to get that back. If the tenant returns that declaration, the landlord cannot evict. So if the tenant delivers this declaration, the landlord cannot evict the tenant for non-payment of rent. The rent that was due from March 1st to August 31st, the landlord can evict if the tenant gives a declaration for that. And going forward for September through January, if the tenant delivers that declaration and 25% of the rent that's owed, the landlord cannot evict. And that would be for every month. That's 25% of the total amount. So if the tenant signs the declaration each month and doesn't pay for three or four months, they owe 25% of that total amount of rent before January 31st. If they've delivered the declaration, but they don't make that 25% payment, the landlord on February 1st can start eviction. So a few more important things about this declaration. It must be in the language that the lease was negotiated and signed in. So it's important if it was in Spanish, for example, the lease, then the declaration must be delivered to the tenant, a blank version in Spanish. We have a sample below. We're one of the first to offer this. We have a sample declaration in English that you can download and use. A few more points we'd like to make on this. The landlord, in addition to delivering the declaration, will have to deliver a notice for demand of payment of rent, and it specifically needs to outline the rent that was missed and when it was missed. So it's important the landlord includes that. High income tenants. So this, these are tenants that have income that's no less than 100, but at least 130% of the median income for the county, they have different requirements. So in addition to the declaration, they also need to show that their income has been affected by COVID-19. That must be returned to the landlord, the declaration, and proof that their income has been hurt by COVID-19. Another very major point, all three day notices that were given before this bill was passed, and I know landlords who kept dropping those, those are void. Now landlords must start over and they must give this 15 day notice plus the declaration and the demand for unpaid rent. So again, it's kind of a complicated bill. Hopefully this will help break it down so it's easier to understand. This is the entire time period that the bill covers from March 1st through January 31st. It's broken down pre-bill and after bill. And we'll explain the difference. And this time period before the bill, so if any rent was missed, whether it was all of it, whether it was one month, a part of a month, this part we'll talk about first. So the landlord is required to deliver the notice that says what was missed and when it was missed. The landlord is also required to deliver the blank declaration. The tenant now has 15 days to sign the declaration. And in the case of high income tenants, they also have to deliver proof. So if the tenant does that, eviction cannot happen. So that's before the bill passed. All right, so the second half after the bill passed, same process, notice is delivered, declaration is delivered, 15 days go by, the tenant has to return the declaration, return the proof if they're a, a high income renter, and also pay 25% of the rent that's due and they have until the end of this time period until 131 to pay that rent. If they do all these things, the landlord cannot evict. If they miss any of these things, including the 25%, the landlord can evict starting February 2nd. So hopefully that helps lay it out a little bit better so that you can understand the difference before the bill and after bill, half, how those different sections are handled. Also built into the bill are foreclosure protections for landlords. Interestingly, this applies to landlords of one to four unit buildings, but not five plus. So five plus, you're on your own. You don't get these protections. 
And these protections include access to the California Homeowners Bill of Rights protections. And I have a link below if you want to learn more on that. It prevents dual tracking, which is, as I've discussed in my foreclosure videos, a lender can't be foreclosing at the same time the landlord is working on a loan modification or a short sale. So that's a big protection. And it allows landlords to apply for CARES Act compliant forbearances. So those are some of the protections built into the bill. But again, it's just for landlords of one to four units and they must have a tenant that's not able to pay rent due to COVID-19. So landlords, how are you going to recover the rent that you are owed? So tenants, you still have to pay this money, but in some cases, landlords, you are gonna to have to sue for that money. And what you're gonna to have to do is go to small claims court. Now, small claims court typically has a limit, but for the sake of recovering past due rent, that limit is waived. There's no limit as long as it's the actual rent you are owed. And there's also a small claims court requirement that you don't go more than two times a year, but in this case, that is removed as well. So landlords, you're gonna to go to small claims court and that's how you're gonna get your money back. You cannot start to do this any sooner than March 1st, 2021. So here's some quick advice for landlords. Number one, if this is complicated. Landlords, as I always say, I'm going to recommend that you seek legal counsel, find an expert. Also know that all those three day notices to pay or quit are now void. You're gonna to have to reissue the proper notices. Start planning for recovering that rent in small claims court. So make sure you have everything documented. Landlord, another important note, there are bigger fines for retaliatory actions for non-payment of rent. So if you think I'm gonna lock out my tenants, I'm gonna call immigration, I'm gonna stop taking care of the unit, there are big fines that this bill puts into place. You shouldn't do that period, but now it's gonna cost you even more if you do do that. Here's some advice for tenants to handle these trying times. So what you need to do, number one, is to reach out for legal assistance. I've done a video on finding low cost or free legal assistance. Please check that link below and make sure you reach out. If a landlord or a lawyer serves you anything, make sure that you reach out to a professional immediately. Do not ignore it. Because if you've been given this 15 day notice in your declaration, you can lose your rights to protection from eviction if you don't return the declaration in time. And if you're returning the declaration and you're considered high income, make sure you include the proof of your income being reduced by COVID-19. If you still can't pay rent, now that we're into September, just make sure that that you return the declaration and you pay 25% of your rent. Because if you don't pay that 25% on February 1st, the landlord will be able to move forward with an eviction. So there's some quick advice for tenants. We made it. Hopefully you're still awake and you survived. Like I said, it was a big bill and there was a lot to cover. If you didn't do it in the beginning, go ahead and hit that like button for me. Please leave your questions in the comments below. I appreciate you and I appreciate you tuning in. Go ahead and make sure you subscribe to our channel. We're going for a thousand and we want to blast through that. And make sure you subscribe to our email newsletter where we keep content like this and more coming at you every week. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, Cobalt Banker Wire Associates. Take care.